Hey guys, welcome back to Cozy Womb Podcast. My name is Shan. I am the mama of the girls. I'm trying to um, get my note page together. Hold on. Hold on. Please hold on. Please hold on. All right, I'm here. What's up? I hope everything is good with you guys. Um, I've been going through some iPhone madness. Let me tell you how iPhone is a bully, okay? iPhone is bullying me, or well, Apple. Apple is bullying me out of my iPhone. It's taking the system cache and um, logs and filling up my phone space to tell me that I'm running out of space. And I've deleted 15 plus apps and the percentage of what's going down in space is not equating to what I deleted. So this is how Apple products force you out of your um, devices to get new devices. I do not want a new iPhone. I do not want an iPhone 11. I think the features on it are corny. I think the updates are corny. Uh, Because I do three podcasts, because I have Twitter, because I I usually record from my phone, I don't have like um, a mic for my equipment yet, and I uh, don't have a proper setup yet because it just doesn't... For what my life is right now, (laughs) I'm looking at hella boxes in my condo and I'm trying to um, remain consistent during this quarantine process because I am in the process of moving it. You know, I just can't do it right now with more devices and buying things. It just doesn't financially make sense. So iPhone is bullying me out of my iPhone 10. I haven't had it that long. I want to say I've had my iPhone 10 for about 10, 11 months. And it's telling me that my system is full. I can't even access my pictures. I can't access anything. It completely took my contacts out of my iPhone. And every time I want to look at a name instead of a number, it's making me download my contacts. So that is the difference between um, Android and Apple products. Android will just really really mess up to where it doesn't work not them forcing you out of your device you can have your device as long as you take care of it in good standing iphone products you cannot their whole method is let's keep them buying let's keep them coming back and um so i was forced to get a phone where i can have um apps on it that I can use like I can't get into my uh, stock account I can't get into my bank account I can't get into my homeowners insurance I can't get into anything so um yeah that's my apple bullying rant now this episode is episode 26 and I want to talk about how do we prevent teen pregnancy Okay, the reality is we cannot prevent teen pregnancy. If a child grows up, gets a little quote unquote what black mamas call fast in the pants, um, male or female child, okay, don't just think it's just girls out here that are fast, it's boys too. Don't encourage that behavior. Teach your male child how to park their urges and their sexual. Um, thoughts okay because they can run into big trouble really quick really big for about 18 plus years too early okay be honest okay and upfront with your growing kids talk to them about their bodies to the point where they want to go and do things correctly so you don't even have to talk to them no more explain things to them show them what things look like Talk to your kids about how you would want things to go. Talk to your kids about what you want for them that is positive. Talk to them about what their aspirations are. Talk to them about their goals. And make sure that their actions are coinciding with what they say. Okay? 
Whatever you do, don't allow the world to raise your kids. Okay? If we allow the world to raise our kids, they would think Bad Girls Club is it. They would think um, pool parties is it. They would think, oh, I'm not going to go to school and I'm not going to go to college and I'm not going to get a job. I'm going to make a song and it's going to be a hit and that's how I'm going to get my millions. I'm going to get on iTunes or I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a business and that's how I'm going to make my millions. I have nothing against that. But you have to be active from... uh, six seven eight nine ten years old wanting to do music or acting or um starting your own lemonade stand without somebody telling you doing your own mail route without somebody telling you um doing your own fashion line drawing like the steps have to be since i knew my son or since i knew my daughter this is what she wanted to do to do all right and as they grow you feed into that but if that's not it you can't have your child out here take uh chasing society culture because it will have them stuck okay and how we prevent teen pregnancy is having the discussion having that talk engaging looking them in the face and be like hey hey I'm not trying to become anyone's grandmother until I am in my late 40s, early 50s. Don't make me come find you. Don't make me pull you out of class in college and be like, yo, what's up? Don't make me have to come find you because you in high school acting a fool doing things behind bleachers and bathrooms you know you ditching school i've never skipped school i've never skipped school and i can't imagine the amount of kids who are skipping school now especially that they on quarantine and they supposed to be doing school at home and i always hear kids outside playing or talking or just being in the street going to and from the store when they are supposed to be in front of a computer but that's not my business because i know where my kids are okay i'm just saying I've never done that. I've never had that mind frame where I'm not going to do what I, I'm supposed to be doing. I'm going to skip school today. I've had mornings where I'm just like, you know what, mom? I can't do I can't do school today. And she would look me in my face and be like, all right. That's it. It wasn't an argument. It was like, no, you better get out of my house and go. You better make sure you don't, you don't miss that person. It, it was like, I know she don't do this often. And if she really not in the mood she's not going or if i was having my cycle and my mom knew my first days were a beast she would go ahead and let me stay home okay and that's the type of relationship i want to have with my daughters where you don't have to sneak and do things behind my back let's have an honest conversation about what you what's going on with you how you feeling um if you need help and let me know because once you start doing things behind my back Oh, I'm going to come down to your level. And I'm going to start doing things with you. Are we going to school today? Are we going to the store? Are we checking the mailbox? Are we going to take a shower? Are we going to go pick out our outfit? Like, you don't want me to be on that level. So respect me. If I tell you you need to go to school, I expect you to be at school. I expect you to be in your classes. I expect you to be on time. I expect that work done. Okay? This teen pregnancy thing, it's an issue before the sex came, okay? It's its parents being too lenient. It's parents not having the right discussions. It's parents, um, I want to, I call it bulldozing their kids and not allowing them to think for themselves or having the space to make decision for themselves. You're constantly telling your kids what they're going to do what they're going to like, what they're going to eat, where they're going to be. And a lot of kids resist that to the point where they purposely do the opposite. Sometimes the best way to be a parent is to talk to your children like they're human beings that deserve respect. Okay? Sometimes you don't have to be as petty as they are. And you're not supposed to be petty with them. Okay? They're a child for a reason. You're a parent for a reason. Stay in your place and they going to stay in theirs. But we going to get into um, this episode, what we can do as parents 
as, um, you know, the guides to how our children can persevere through their teens without pregnancy, persevere through their 20s without pregnancy, and make sure that we become grandmothers and grandfathers at a timely fashion, all right? If that's something you into, join me on this Cozy Moon podcast today because I'm about to go in, okay? I appreciate you for checking out the show if this is your first time. Again, my name is Shan, and you can always find me on Twitter. You can always find me on Cozy Moon on Facebook. You can always hashtag Cozy Moon Pod and find merch, episodes, and all types of good media, okay? But let's go ahead and get into these messages so we get into, can get into today's show. Let's go. Hey, hey, it's Anya Dula, and I am the host of Intercultured with Anya Dula. Intercultured with Anya Dula is a podcast that focuses on motherhood, culture, birth work, and travel. And it's just a place for women to come together to discuss our philosophies on motherhood, to discuss our work and birth work, if that's what we do, but mainly to bring women of all different cultures together so that we can talk about how we mother, how we hashtag do motherhood so that we can learn from one another and learn to love each other. That's really what it's all about. I hope you'll join us. Intercultured with Anya Dula podcast is available on all the major podcast stations. I hope you'll join us. Can't wait to connect. Hey guys, just a reminder, there is Mama's Cozy Closet that has some merch on there for moms out there. So if you're interested in getting a cute sweatshirt, that kids again, getting a cute sweatshirt, um, a fanny pack or a mug, I got some goodies on there for you guys. All right, peace. Hey, Cozy Womb fam, this is JC, the dopest mommy around and owner of He Hates My Tees, a novelty t-shirt company based out of Arlington, Texas. This is our first year grinding it out and baby, it's been a beautiful journey. I'm a mommy of two spicy kids, Davey and Jameson, and an educator. And I started my company as a way to be self-sufficient and control my own narrative on my value after working several years in a corporate environment being, you know, undervalued. My latest collection is called The Dopest Around, saluting all dope-ass folks. We just released The Dopest Mommy Around Dad Hats, and they are fire. You hear me? Fire. It's available in several colors. Follow us on IG at He Hates My Tees. And visit our website, hehatesmytees.com. And that's tees, T-E-E-S. Use code COZY15 for 15% off your purchase. Love ya, be dope, stay dope, and I'll see you around. All right. So, first things first, make sure you get to know who your kids' friends are, okay? Know who your kids' friends are in elementary, know who your kids' friends are in middle school, and know who your kids' friends are in high school, okay? And have discussions with them every day when they come home. How was school? What happened? Tell me about it. Give me the tea. You know, whatever your um, kid is on, you know, let them know. Anya's favorite thing is, are are you kidding me? Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious, okay? Um, Show your kids what symptoms look like when it comes to sex, okay? Be honest. The more they know, the more they will avoid, okay? My mom had this thick medical book since I was in elementary that shows you in color, in details, what syphilis looks like what chlamydia look like, what genital warts look like, what crabs look like, what um, sexual rashes look like. And I always love to look at that book because I'm just like, so people are out here actually risking themselves 
to possibly look like this for some type of sexual pleasure is what they call it and and, and she didn't hold that from me okay and I appreciate her for it because that's maybe why she has me with only seven sexual partners at 33 now I can't speak for my brothers okay my brothers you know they pick their women over the years how they pick their women but for me I will say I have been super selective with my man pieces okay as a woman okay and two of those seven have to be my kids fathers okay so you know picky child oh I'm liking that picky about their veggies oh please don't okay I'm already dealing with that and that is a hassle all right but you want to be honest with them about what they need to be aware of why they need to be picky about their people why they need to uh be more engaged about what their people are on, how they move, what kind of women are they dating, what kind of dudes does she date, okay? Does she know that he was just out here giving everybody a sample and she's dating him still? Like, why? What's the why behind that? I don't like how you move, so no, we could never be on that level. Like, I want my kids to be able to decipher, is this a, is this a smart choice? Is this person a smart choice? Okay? That's what I want. Like, I know the kids are moving faster these days. I know it. I don't know why they're moving faster. Because if they really knew the realities of this adult life, honey, they would have been eight years old four more times. Okay? I promise you. This adult life. And if you are a teenager, listen to me. If you are a preteen, listen to me. This adult life is not what you want. You know how they be on boot camp? With kids that's acting up at home and not listening to their parents. I'm like that about the life. This adult life right here, this is not what you want. It's coming, so be prepared. Set yourself up, okay? When when your parents was like, you need to save your money instead of buying that toy. Save your money, okay? Because the price is going up for adult life, okay? Things is costing more and jobs is paying less, okay? So, so that mindset is going to set them up. It's going to set them up, okay? Your child should be terrified of teen pregnancy. Not glorifying it like they do on TV and on the internet, okay? Terrified is what I want of a teen pregnancy, okay? I didn't do it to my mother. Um, My brothers didn't do it to my mother. And I'm sure she appreciated it, okay? But I do have family members where that did go on. Why? Because they was a bit they was a bit loose and too lenient when they should have pulled their child in. Okay? Don't be that parent. Improve your economic opportunities by figuring out what your kid loves to do. Does your kid like gymnastics? Does your kid like doing hair? Does your kid like cooking? Does your kid like building things? Like does your kid play an instrument? Does your kid play a sport? Does your kid like to travel? Is your kid into YouTubing and and gaming? Can they make money from that? Is this something that's going to keep them busy and not outside doing nothing constructive? Like, pour into your kids. That's another way to prevent teen pregnancy, okay? And it's not nothing major. It's not nothing bad. Sometimes, yes, it will cost you, okay? Gymnastics class is probably going to cost you. Karate is probably going to cost you time and money. But it's better than not knowing what they're doing outside in the streets with who knows who and who knows what. Okay? That's a better option. Okay? It comes with awards and accolades. Okay? Better option. Um, next thing you could do is uh, remind your children, I do not want to be a granny in my 40s. I do not want to be a granny in my 40s. I am 33. And I just feel like I should have at least 15 to 18 more years not having to babysit anybody's baby. Not having to have any grandchildren. I just feel like that's what I deserve. I deserve that. Okay? I deserve that. Let me get that. Okay? Let me get that. Because I'm I'm struggling to understand why the kids today are glorifying teen pregnancy. Okay? The clothes are cute, but they cost money. The kids keep growing and they keep eating. Trust me, okay? 
you do not want teen pregnancy. Always remind them that's not what you want, okay? So they could be, you know, smart about their moves. Let me get some of this tea. I got some matcha tea. I've been trying to um, drink tea without sugar. Um, this time I'm drinking this tea without honey. I got this bad habit of having cold things with hot things. So right before I have my tea or my coffee, I usually have a popsicle or some ice cream. And then I have my tea right after. I don't know what that's about. Been like that since my first pregnancy. That hasn't left. I think I'm scarred. But back to this, okay? Keep your kids active. That's going to keep them out of the mind frame of having sex before they need to, not knowing the pros and cons of what sex is. And to be honest, when I first had sex at 17 years old, yes, I was 17 years old. When I first had sex at 17 years old at the NBC Suites in um, Buckhead in Atlanta on prom night, I just, I didn't understand what the hype was about. What was the hype about? Okay? Because I did not enjoy it. I was really over it very quick. But at least when I did it, I did it with my boyfriend that I had in high school that I actually cared about, that actually still cares about me. But he's really struggling to this day, 16 plus years later, to, to understand that we are not ever going to be a thing again. You know what I'm saying? He's still holding me to my promise that I made him when I was 16, talking about I was going to have a kid from him. I don't want no more kids, so that's not going to happen. But at least I had it with somebody I trusted, I liked, and, um, you know, still cool today. Okay? Sometimes I have to put him on the block list, but that's not what we're talking about. But um, educate. Educate your kids. The more you educate your kids, the more further they're going to steer away from the pregnancy, okay? And when I tell you it is not about um, not saying the right things, it's not about uh, doing it wrong. Just drill it. Talk about it. Talk about it until they repeat it to you verbatim. Be like, oh, okay, so you know. Okay, so we don't have to talk about that? All right, great. Okay? Because what you need to be worried about is the ones you don't talk about. What you need to be worried about is, a, is the discussions and that you avoid in the house because ah, I don't want to talk about I don't want to think about you having sex. They're going to have sex. They're going to have sex. Did you hear me? Your teens are going to have sex, okay? There are children having sex in elementary school. They don't know what hole things are going in. I'm sorry to burst the bubble, but that's the reality today, okay? There are, t- there are uh, young kids, preteens, having sex in middle school, okay? This this um, digital world, this internet, this Instagram, they're one gram away from setting up a date to ju- do just that, okay? These pedophiles, no matter how many shows show up on the television or on the internet, they still showing up waiting for your kid to come out of car and meet them somewhere. That's just the reality of, of what world we living in. They're not going to stop. There's three things that will never stop in this world. It's drugs moving, regardless of how many laws are made. It's sex. And um, it's, it's killing. And the way that we try to prevent all of that is to educate. You educate your kids, you educate your kids, and you educate your kids. Don't stop talking to them. And don't ever feel like they get it. I don't need to talk to you about that. You know better. Did y'all have the conversation? No. But they know better. They know what I expect. How do they know what you expect? Did you say one time? Do you exude the actions behind what you say? Meaning, you cannot be a father trying to tell your daughters and your son, um... You need to wait to have sex until um, your mid twenties, or you you in your thirties, or you married, and you didn't you didn't do that. So if you know the reality is they're definitely gonna have sex before they're married or before they're in a serious relationship in their mid twenties, don't tell them that because you're telling them unachievable things that were not there for you. And as much as you do not want to know that your child is having sex. 
prepare them for what the cons of that possibility will be. Okay? Whew, we just got to make sure the resources are there. If something happens, they know how to protect their bodies. They know what to do if accidents happen because they will happen, okay? And when I say accidents, condoms breaking because they will break their man-made, okay? Um, their condoms do not prevent STDs, okay? So if you feel off, if you feel like something's off with your body, your pH balance is off, something is smelling like um, fish of the sea, come see about me. Come to your mama. Come talk to me. And I'm going to let you know if you're not smelling right. And I'm going to let you know that hygiene is, is going to bring you closer to God in a good way. It's not going to send you up too, too fast. It's just going to bring you closer to God in a good way, okay? Come talk to me. And men, you need to be talking to your sons about hygiene. You can't spray cologne over, over dirty clothes and dirty bodies, okay? If that deodorant is not working, it might not be the deodorant for you, okay? We have to have these discussions. These kids don't wake up and automatically know what they need to do. It's constant pouring in, okay? Pouring it, you know, overrun it, okay? Um, show your daughter how much easier life would be with not being pregnant. That is major key. Show them what their options are. Surround them with other girls that are focused on what their purpose is, okay? That's a good motivator, okay? You could be cool. You could be swagalicious. I just made that word up. Is that a word? I don't know. And you don't even have to be pregnant. You could have more money to yourself and not have to spend it on a baby and then worry about yourself years later if you don't get pregnant. You know how much formula costs right now? It's about $31 a can. And that can might last you two, two and a half days. So you times how a baby would want to eat diapers, wipes, water, food for yourself, rent, car note, uh, gas. You want to eat too? It's pricey. And you could only work so many hours in a day. Daycare. Listen. Make pregnancy so unattractive to your kids. And I promise you, that is the only conversation you need to have. Make it unattractive. But make it unattractive for your sons too. Just don't drill in on your daughters. Make it unattractive for your sons too. Because it's a dual thing. You wanted to have sex and she wanted to have sex. My, I wish I had a son. Because the same discussion that we having with my daughters is the same as discussion that we having with my son. Make sure you're not a possibility of getting another girl pregnant. Make sure your name don't even come up. Okay? It's about choices. It's about being smart. It's about uh, thinking three, four, five steps ahead. It's about not even putting yourself in a position where that may be a possibility. Okay, are you not busy enough? Is your teacher not giving you enough homework? Do you not have enough hours at work? Like, tell, tell a boy how much money he can make working at a warehouse and not having no kids. Okay, tell him what type of car he can have, what type of shoes he can buy, what type of clothes he can buy, what type of places he can go see without having kids. You can't travel. When you a teenager with your friends, when you got a baby. I promise you, I'm not babysitting no babies while my kids are teenagers because they wanted to have a good time. They wanted to have a good night. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Okay? You need to stress that to them. You need to tell them and, and, and have other parents talk to them. And maybe you might even want to have a teen parent talk to them. And tell them about the cost that they're pushing out. And tell them how they don't get no sleep. And tell them how their friends don't come over no more. And tell them how they had to move back in um, with their aunties. Because their, their, their mom and their daddy didn't want none of that. It's real. It's real. You have to have a big support system when you have young kids. It's hard. It's not easy. 
Don't let that good time be that one time. That good time don't have to be that one time. You can have a, a great time downstairs with everybody just partying, listening to music, and dancing. And then you could go home safely. You don't have to drink. You don't have to do drugs to have a great time. You don't have to. I promise you, you don't. If you have an independent, purpose-driven friend or friends, let your daughters hang around them. Men, if you have a mentor or you have friends in your life that have their own businesses, work for great companies, let them talk to your son. It's about exposure. It's about giving them another uh, vision of what their possibilities are that's going to make them steer clear from the, the, the cop-out. The cop-out is trying to have a good time like adults have a good time. That's the cop-out. Remain a teenager if you're a teenager because teenagers have things and luxuries in life that grown-ups don't have. I wish I didn't have to pay rent. I wish I didn't have to pay car insurance. I wish my bill was still $50 from uh, Metro PCS. I wish. But it's not. It's not. All the bills that your parents have right now, it's a down payment to go ahead and get that bill turned on. That 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 heat, that heat, that water, um, credit, like, it's, it's, it's something about adult life that's just not cute. Will never be cute. It ain't cute to me. I don't care how much money I make. The more money you make, the more your taxes ain't cute. Okay? Unless you got the right write-offs. Okay? Adulting, I promise you, is not what you think. Parenting, I promise you, is not what you think. I hate that society makes it look all cute and fluffy and easy for teens. It's not that easy. It's not what you see on MTV. It's not easy. And then you don't know the complications that you can have as a teen mom because your body is still developing. Your body is still changing. Um, I didn't feel like a real adult until after my 25th birthday. So if you're a teen mom or a teen dad out here, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. I was pregnant with my first child at 28. Okay? Don't do it to yourself. You have a lot of growing to do. You have a lot of time for that. Don't ever feel pressure to go ahead and hurry up and have a kid that your kid is not ready to be raised by you because you you barely could teach him anything. You don't even know what the world is like yet. All right? Don't have babies while living with your parents. Don't have babies while living with your parents. Okay? Have kids when you can have your own house, your own car, your own job, sign your own checks, mail off your own bills, pay for your own bills, and your children could come to visit sometimes and you could pick them up. That's when you have kids. Okay? I don't care how much money you have. It's not about money. Kids are not about money. It's about time, patience, wisdom, consistency, always being able to pour in and and, and, and just a level of living that you have to have. Teen pregnancy is just not it. All right? And it, please explain to your sons. Yes, your sons need this education too. Oral sex can lead to mumps and bumps. On their private parts. I'm telling you, show them the pictures. I promise you, Google is free. You just need some Wi-Fi. Go ahead and hop on some Wi-Fi and show them. The books are out here, okay? Library still exists. Anal is sex. Don't be fooled. Anal is also sex. Pregnancy is about the male and the female being responsible and having responsibilities. It's not just on a girl. It's not just on a, on a man. All right? Baby life at a young age is not glorified. Stay off of MTV. I promise you, they will have you in the traps. Don't be in the traps looking at MTV. That ain't real life. Okay? Don't steal your years away 
by rushing into the unknown of adulthood. It's not pretty. It's not cute. Don't be a teen parent. Okay? I don't want my children being teen parents, and I don't want that for any of your kids. Stop being scared of having a discussion that needs to be had. Okay? The more you talk to them, the better they're going to be. The more you surround them with positivity and good people, the better they're going to be. Okay? You got to encourage your kids, build up their confidence, and don't let them feel like a baby is about to make somebody do right. Babies don't make people do right. Babies didn't make uh, my kids' fathers do right. That was a choice they had to make on their own. All right? It's about positivity, honesty, and being direct. Parents, that is who we are. And even when our kids become adults, guess what? They still expect us to be there. They still expect us to help. It's not when they're 18, it's a cutoff. It's not that. Because when they're 18, new rules apply. New life is coming. When they're 25, new rules apply. New life is coming. New expectations. Okay? To be honest, I would like for my children to live with me until they're 24. Okay? And I hope we get along when they're teenagers. I hope I survive that. I'm terrified. But I hope I survive that. I hope by that time I built up enough patience to be able to handle that. Okay? Because my girls are sensitive. They're different. And I hope their fathers are there to go ahead and embrace, you know, the guidance I'm trying to give. And help me in that process. Because it's not easy. Don't make your goal to become a teen uh, parent because it's cute. It's not cute. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, okay? Be better, stay focused, and find some purpose in your life. And set yourself up so you can set your kids up, okay? There's never a right time to have kids. I agree, but it's definitely a right time not to be having kids, okay? That time does exist, okay? And it's not in your teens. Thank you guys for listening to the Cozy Room. I just wanted to help some parents out if they didn't know how to approach it. And if you are a child, preteen, I'm talking to you. I'm being honest. I didn't lie to you not one time on here. If you are a teenager, I'm talking to you. You can have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Y'all don't have to have sex. And if that boyfriend or girlfriend is pressuring you to have sex, that's not your person. Because they should be about whatever makes you happy and whatever is going to be preventative. They should be just as terrified as you are about the possibility of being a teen a teen uh, parent. You know what I'm saying? Just as terrified. Get on my same page. That should be the goal. Is this person on my same page? Are they out here taking risks that I can't afford? Oh, they are? Okay, you not for me, you cool peoples. I'm going to see you in the um, hallway in the locker rooms, and it's going to be good money, but I can't do this. Like, build up your children's confidence enough to say no and not feel bad about it. Okay? Some people are just not for you. And sometimes, unfortunately, because kids come from parents who were teen parents, they feel like, well, if my mom did it, if my dad did it, I could do it. It's different times, okay? When your mom and dad was probably a teenager, they probably had parents that were about that and, and, and a village of family that wanted to help. Family these days are on Facebook, Instagram, and you can't babysit no child off of Instagram, honey. You just can't do it. But um, huh, I hope this episode helps somebody. I hope it helps somebody. Because <laughs> I'm bracing myself. I'm bracing myself. I, I don't want to see this teen pregnancy be a thing. I went to school. I went to a high school in Florida. In Melbourne. And I hated it. And instead of them build classrooms for students because they needed more classrooms. They had trailers for students who had babies. They had trailers for students who needed daycare while they went to high school. 
the teaching of what needed to go on before that happened did not happen. And that's why you had to incorporate pregnant teenagers that have daycare while at high school so they could go to class. Let's teach our kids before they become child parents, teen parents. We don't want that. Let's get ahead of it, okay? Let's stop glorifying shows like Teen Mom and uh, Teen Pregnancy. That's not something to be glorified. And why is it Teen Mom? (laughs) It's equally a daddy's thing. To, to be responsible for a child. Okay? There's nothing... <laughs> Listen! When I tell you that a child sneaker costs just as much as an adult shoe, <laughs> you don't want this life. Okay? It's expensive. It's not cute. It's not cute. Your child needing sneakers and their foot is growing... And they get to a point where they were in the same size shoe as you and you got to pay a hundred and something dollars for their sneakers. It's not cute. Mm-mm. There's other things to do with your money. Don't do it to yourself. Thank you for listening to Cozy Womb. I'm, I'm shaking my head as if y'all can see me and y'all can't. Oh, it's just not cute. Don't do it. <clears throat> I'm just trying to help y'all out. Just trying to help y'all out. Yay! Bye. Bye.